Jesus and his church to your child and to your brothers. You do? Amen. 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 Do you promise that you will be for John Paul Jr., a spiritual guy, praying and watching for the day when your child and your brother is ready to receive Christ as his personal Savior? They do. Amen. To the congregation, do you, the people of God, in His church, covenant with these parents to provide a loving church home for John Paul? Yes. Do you promise to continue to teach the Bible in the church so that the child will never lack hearing the truth of God's word? Yes. We do.
Yes, I, I, I'll be looking forward to these baby dedications and seeing these babies dedicated. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a long way from being baptized. That's not, we're not baptizing babies. What we're doing is we're dedicating babies. See, these babies have been born, but they're yet to be born again. Amen? Amen. Amen. So see, there's a big difference. See, we've been born, and now we've got to be born again. But see, what we're doing is we're dedicating, our families are dedicating, we're dedicating ourselves to do right by these babies. And as a congregation in a church where these babies will be coming and have come or will be coming, it's your responsibility to be godly influences before them. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You know, God was speaking to me about some things last night, and I want to talk to you about choices and words. Two things that determine our destiny here on earth and our eternity. The choices that we make and the words that we speak. You know, words are powerful. Words can make you and they can break you. You know, the Bible talks about choices and it talks about words. If you would, turn with me in your Bible to the book of Deuteronomy chapter 30. Praise the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You know, sometimes the choices are black and white. You know, and that, that has nothing to do with anything except it's, it's either right or wrong. That's what that means. The choices are one or the other, and there's not an in-between. In Deuteronomy 30, beginning in verse 11, I'm reading from the New International. It says, now, what I am commanding you today is not too difficult for you or beyond your reach. You know, God said in His Word that He would never put too much on you that you could not bear it. He says, it is not up in heaven so that you have to ask who will ascend into heaven to get it and proclaim it to us so we may obey it. Nor is it beyond the sea, so that you have to ask who will cross the sea to get it and proclaim it to us so we may obey it. No, the word is very near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart, so you may obey it. He says, see, I set before you today life and prosperity, death and destruction, for I command you today to love the Lord your God, to walk in His ways, and to keep His commands, decrees, and laws. Then you will live and increase, and the Lord your God will bless you in the land that you are entering to possess. Amen. You see, if you come into a place with God, where you are standing for an opportunity to be blessed, Like you may have just moved out of a situation in life and into another situation and God is preparing to bless you, then what you're going to have to be considering are these things that God expects from you. Otherwise, you will not receive the blessings of God if you do not follow in His commandments and His plans. Just because He... The word says you can have it. It doesn't mean you're just going to get it. But if your heart turns away, it says in verse 17, and you are not obedient, and if you draw away to bow down to other gods, drugs, 
cars, houses, men, women, people, jobs. If you bow down to those gods, those are gods, and you worship them, he says, I declare to you this day that you will certainly be destroyed. You will not live long in the land you are crossing the Jordan to enter and possess. See, many of you are crossing over a land and crossing into another place. Just as they were crossing the Jordan, you're crossing a river. A lot of you are crossing a river in life right now. And you're entering into a place to be blessed where you can't possess those things of God. But if you do not be obedient unto God, you will not receive those blessings. He says in verse 19, he says, This day I call heaven and earth as witnesses against you that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Now choose life so that you and your children may live. And that you may love the Lord your God, listen to His voice, and hold fast to Him. For the Lord is your life, and He will give you many years in the land He swore to give your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Everything that He swore to give to you, He swore already to give it to you in the Bible. It will be an inheritance also to your children. You know, God doesn't have grandchildren. He don't have stepchildren. He's just got children. I'm telling you folks, we're living in some times right now we need to start beginning to wake up and get serious about God. You know, we need to decide to stay alive. You know, games with eternity must cease. You see, we're going to have to learn to focus on God. We've got to stop looking to the right, to the left. We've got to look straight ahead. Because He is the answer for everything that we need. Amen. You see, when Peter was walking on the water, he kept his eyes on God for a while. But what happened? He all of a sudden got his eyes off of Jesus and all of a sudden he realized, hey, I'm standing on this water. He got his eyes on the circumstances and the situations. He forgot about what the answers were. He forgot about who the answer was. He forgot about what was able to save him, to redeem him, to cause him to walk in the supernatural because he's got his eyes on the natural. And he saw the circumstances. He said, hey man, I'm out here on this water. This isn't going to work. I'm not supposed to be able to do this. I'm going to tell you something. You can't do anything without God. But the Bible says with God, all things are possible. you got to get your eyes the circumstances and get your eyes focused on Him. Don't be looking on the right or the left. Don't be looking at the problems all around you. Be looking at God because God will set you free. Amen. Right. Yes, He's the same today as He was yesterday and He will be tomorrow and forever. I'm going to tell you something. God is alive. If your God's not working for you, you need to train Him in and find what it works. Because there's a God out there. He's alive today. He's alive. He's alive. He's alive. And He has the power to change your life and keep it on track. Keep you focused on the things of eternity. Abraham says he was just a visitor passing through. That's all we are. We're just passing through. We don't belong here. He said he was like an alien. When he's translated into the Greek, it seems like an alien. He didn't belong here. And he was searching for a heavenly home. His heart and his mind was set on God in eternity. Because he knew that this, this life was so short. And all the pain and suffering that he knew that was going on in this life would someday come to an end and that he would live in a place where there'll be no more crying. There'll be no more death. There'll be no more sickness. There'll be no more hurt. There'll be no more pain and sorrow. You know, God is looking. His eyes are wandering to and fro throughout this earth right now, looking for men and women who will worship Him in spirit and in truth. The true worshipers of God. I'm going to tell you something, folks. 
There's men and women in this room right now. I want to tell you something. And I know some of you men in this program right here, you want to tell you something. God has got his eyes on some of you to do great things for him. But it's going to be up to your choice. Your choice. He says, I put today before you life and death, blessings and curses. And he says, so choose life. I mean, he's a loving God. He's a loving God. You see, so many people, what they do is they get so focused on the love of God and they forget about one thing. There is a judgment day coming. And the wrath of God is going to be poured out. You know, He destroyed this world once by water. And He's reserved this final time by fire. And it's coming, folks. It's coming. You keep your eyes on the Middle East. You keep your eyes on the armies that are marching forth. You keep your eyes on the signs of the times. You keep your eyes and your ears open. It's time to wake up and smell the coffee. I mean, it could happen any time. It could happen in 10 years. It could happen in 20 years. But I'm telling you something, folks. It's coming. It could be even longer than that. But it's getting close. We are in the time of the Bible calls is the beginning of sorrows, as Jesus said. It's the beginning of a certain era of the end. And things are moving quickly. Turn with me to Joshua 24. Very familiar scripture. I've got it hanging in the house in my, in my home. Joshua 24. Let me tell you something. It's a good scripture to hang on the wall in your house. Joshua 24. Beginning in verse 14, he says, Now fear the Lord and serve Him with all faithfulness. Throw away the gods your forefathers worship beyond the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. He says, now fear the Lord. Respect the Lord. Don't be afraid of the God that's going to punish you. It, it be on your back every time you turn around. That's not God. That's not the nature of God. A lot of people are always thinking that God caused this to happen. God caused that to happen. God's going to hurt me if I do this. God's going to hurt me if I do that. I'm going to tell you something. What happens if you do or we do the things that we shouldn't do, we get out of fellowship with God, we sin against God, and God will not protect us from the devil, and the devil will come in and God will let him have his way. Just as it happened with Job, God allowed the devil to do things to Job. And when you don't do what God wants you to do, God don't hurt you. He just stops protecting you. And here comes the devil. And when God's not protecting me, you're in trouble because I'm going to tell you something. You may be tough, but you ain't tough enough to beat the devil without God. And he goes on in verse 15. He says, But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods your forefathers served before the river or the gods of the Amorites in those lands you, you, you are living, for as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. You see, Joshua made a choice. And just as we, these folks and myself, our families have come in here with our babies, we are choosing to serve the Lord. Me and my house. You know, men, you are the head of your home. You are the head of that home. You are the spiritual head of that home. You need to be. 
You better be. And then when you stand before God, you need to be able to say, me and my house, we serve the Lord. Because you've led the way. And mothers, you've got to be right there with them. Sometimes you're going to have to carry the load when a man can't carry it sometimes. When he gets down, you're going to have to pick him up. And when she gets down, you'll be there to pick her up. But men, you need to lead the way. Amen. You see, choices may not be convenient because he said if it seems undesirable to you today, if it seems a little inconvenient to you, see, it's not always convenient to serve God because there's a whole lot of temptation out there in that world and there's a whole lot of weakness in this flesh. And there's a whole lot of people pulling and pushing on you. And there's a whole lot of situations going on around you that makes you want to just give up and sit down and just let everything go on. And just say, hey, I don't care no more. I, I've tried 